Hello, and welcome to another basketball edition of the Adrian Ross Show. I want to talk to you about something I've talked about a number of times in various live streams that I've done here on the Adrian Ross Show channel, but I've never dedicated a single video to. And I know that not everybody has ever watched any of the live streams. So I want to bring the conversation here. It has to do with Caitlin Clark and it has to do with Lisa Bluter, considering Lisa Bluter as a head coach for Caitlin Clark on the professional level. But before I get to that, if you've not subscribed to the show, I would appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. Your support is extremely, extremely appreciated. So now to what I want to talk about. We know there's a whole lot of conversation going on that has been going on even before Christy Size was fired, even before the season came to an end. Everybody was talking about, okay, well, who would we who would we replace Christy Sides with? Like most people, not everybody, but most people felt like Christy Sides needed to go, but that brought up the conversation. Okay, well, who would replace her? Lisa Bluter's name would inevitably come up. And I understand that. Look at the success Lisa Bluter had with Caitlin Clark at Iowa. Seems like not only a great coach, but a great person, a person who has those values that are a part of uh, the Iowa culture, right? So you're thinking, okay, so she's going to be a great coach. She's going to, she is a great person. She's going to know how to coach Caitlin, how to let Caitlin go. And she's going to be able to build around her. We've seen it at Iowa. I don't deny that at all, but I have always said that it would not be Lisa Bluter who would coach Caitlin Clark on this level. Not that I don't want her to coach her necessarily because of something about Lisa Bluter, but because there's something else that I think that people need to see. Picture this. Caitlin Clark has her college coach coming to the professional level. Yes, there's familiarity. Yes, there's mutual respect. And yes, that goes a long way. But what Lisa Bluter understands is that you don't want to follow a Caitlin Clark to the next level. What a coach wants to do, what a teacher wants to do, what a parent wants to do is train and release. Even what pastors want to do. You want to train and you want to release, and then you trust that what you instilled in that person is going to carry them and that they're going to go even farther. I think of it like this. A parent raises a child, raises her son, for example. Son gets married. Son then moves off with his wife to another state, perhaps. We all kind of look a little bit like when the, when the mother who raised the son, who's now married, says, I'm going to pack up my bags. I'm going to follow my son and my daughter-in-law wherever they go. I'm going with them to the new state. It's sort of like, okay, mama, you got to back up a little bit and you got to let Sonny boy do his thing with his family. You've poured into him. Now let him go. You can trust him, right? What you put in him isn't going to be lost. And I think Lisa Bluter has enough wisdom not to want to put that kind of pressure on Caitlin and really doesn't want to put that kind of pressure on herself. I don't know if she'd want to coach anyway. She's retired. I don't know about all that. But I do believe that she's she's smart enough to know that that's the kind of pressure you don't want to put. You don't want, you don't want it to, now, now granted, I know some of you saying, Caitlin's always going to have pressure. They're always going to be looking at her. And you're right. That's true. But this is different. You don't want the talk to be, oh, Caitlin had to bring her mommy coach with her. Her mommy coach follow her. And then, oh, did Caitlin get Lisa Bluter the job? Is Lisa Bluter trying to make Caitlin her lifelong protege? And all the stuff that comes. And then the extra eyeballs and the scrutiny that's going to come with that. It's almost a a no win situation. And I guess if they, she went right out and they won a championship right away, 
it would be worth it, right? I guess so. But I don't think that Lisa Bluter would put Caitlyn in that situation. I'm not even sure Caitlyn would want that. I don't know. Maybe she would. But I do believe that Lisa Bluter has the, you know, the more of the experience that come with the years. And I think what she would say is, I, I got to release Caitlyn to be the great player that's in her to be. My time with her was wonderful. It's an experience I'll never forget. I'll always cherish. I'm better for it. Caitlin's better for it. The Iowa program is better for it. And now Caitlin steps into the new level and I'm not going to put that kind of pressure and the scrutiny. Oh, what does she think she's coaching her in Iowa? Oh, who does she who does she think she is? Who does Caitlin think she is? Oh, it, it's a whole, oh, her mommy is with her holding her hand. She had to bring her coach, had to come along with her and wipe her nose. That might seem wild, but I'm telling you, that's the kind of pressure that Lisa Bluter doesn't want. It's the kind of pressure she doesn't want to put on Caitlin either. She would rather say, you know what? I can talk to Caitlin on the phone. You don't think Caitlin was talking to Lisa Bluter during, during the, um, her first season, her rookie season, as Caitlin no doubt was frustrated with her teammates at the beginning, with the league for sure, and with Christy Sides. I have no doubt that they were on the horn at, at, at points and that she was able to advise her. And it's another thing, like Lisa Bluter is an advisor for Iowa. Well, if she could also be an advisor for Indiana, maybe she would do something like that. I'm not even sure she would do that. But that might be a place for her, a fit for her. But the head coach coaching position, I don't believe she would take that on. And even though I am sure Caitlin spoke with her coach on the phone, opened up about some things on the phone, I'm almost certain that Lisa Bluter would have been extremely careful even how she spoke to Caitlin about Christy Sides. Because that's just something, it's a fine line that you tend to tread very carefully on. I'm sure she said, Caitlin, you can speak with me. I'm sure she didn't shut the door. I, I'm sure that happened. But I'm also, I feel certain that she would have been cautious even because she doesn't want to do something or say something that she deposits into Caitlin's spirit to, to, to have a certain response to a coach that it looked like she was going to have to be stuck with. And it turned out to be so for the rest of the season. So I'm sure she let her talk. She was the sounding board. She gave some advice and she still probably treaded extremely lightly for, not for Christy Sides. Well, maybe a little bit because there is a certain coach to coach kind of respect, but more so for Caitlin, because she's got to, she's got to work with this woman. She's got to be under her, her leadership. So that's why I say when people say Lisa Bluter and a lot of people say that would be, and that would be so cool. And if I'm totally wrong, I'll say, Hey, I'm wrong. And I'll be, I'll be cheering it on because I just, Lisa Bluter, it, how do you not like Lisa Bluter? Right? So what I'm talking about is not about liking Lisa Bluter or anything like that. It is about the wisdom that I believe she has to say, I did my part. Now, Caitlin has moved on and I'm going to st stay back here. I'm going to be an ear if she needs me. I'll, I'll, I'll share what I can, but I'm going to enjoy the view. I'm not going to be the mommy coach who had to follow you along and open you up to that whole thing. And I believe there's wisdom in that mindset. And I believe that Lisa Bluter has that wisdom. Caitlin might also, I mean, she's 22. She's younger. She might have that also. She might say, I, I want to, I want to fly. I want to spread my wings and fly as she is doing. But even if she didn't have that mindset, I, I believe that it's wisdom to say, I'm going to let you go. You got this. Whoever the coach is, hey, I wish them well, and, and you're going to do great things. So that's my perspective. And I've shared some of this a number of times in lives, but I wanted to, to bring it to a video because, again, not everybody is uh, catching the lives. And if you're not, you should be. All right. So that's my thought about it. I know we want what we want and we think it would be a great idea because of all the success, but there's so many moving parts and you don't want to put a pressure on you that that's, that just adds to it, especially that for this first season for Caitlin was, a, she handled it extremely well and performed extremely well. But I'm telling you, she had a load to carry with all the stuff, all the stuff, all the things, you know, we've been talking about it. It's moving forward time.
right? And it's not bring your coach with you as you move forward, your old coach with you. That's what I say. And you know what? I, if I were if I were Lisa Bluter, I wouldn't, would I want to coach in the WNBA? It's, they, again, she's from the culture of Iowa. She's You go in there, it's just a whole different culture. And really, a lot of college coaches feel like going into the WNBA is a step down. And in many ways it is. And in a, in a huge, huge, I'll just say situation with that league right now. There's so much that needs to be turned right side up, for real. And it, and it can get there, I, I believe, but they're going to make the necessary changes. And I don't know, if I'm Lisa Bluter, I don't want nothing to do with it at all. And I certainly don't want anything to do with it until them changes have been made. So anyway, that's what I think. I know some of you disagree. Some of you, you hear what I'm saying. Whatever you think, get in the comments, talk about it. I'll catch you next time, God willing. God bless you abundantly.